Okay. It was Infamous and Thunder Predator who were picking it a bunch in that series. Interesting. Mm. We're picking that Willow. I, I do remember we already saw like a lot more Willow than I would have anticipated, especially compared to other regions. So interesting mm-hmm. that it's a first phase ban. I I have I would theorize that it's because it's two three pick for Infam- or, uh, for Infinity, and I feel like that's a good place that's to take it. Willow. Yeah, you know, she pairs with a lot of offlaners really well to actually put that pressure on the safe lane, which is one thing we know Beast Ghost kind of rely on, uh, is getting kills into their safe lane and uh, putting a lot of gold on Whisper as well in that offlane too. So kind of yeah. like it feels like the two side lanes are the most important part for Beast Ghost, right? I agree. I agree. It feels like it's not like they don't care about Chris Luck, but it always feels like they trust him to do well. So. Like they, they, you know, they will rotate with Schofield there uh, if he can get a kill. But it's not like they babysit Chris Luck too much, right? They just leave him be. Dire team pick. Uh, right. Lena. Okay. Ooh. A lot of uh, Lena safe. love recently. Yeah. Maybe mid, maybe support. She's got the skills to pay the bills. I am into the the four, the five, and uh, the mid Lena. I think it's fine. You know, we might even see a three Lena every once in a while. I presume. Mm-hmm. I mean, Whisper played three Silencer Five before, like remaining. basically the same thing, honestly. <laughs> Range hero so... bullying and uh, suppressing the enemy carry. All right, never go wrong with Snapfire. Radiant Snapfire Mars. There Snapfire you go. Centaur. Beautiful. Even better. All right, let's Nicely go. Done. Yeah, I like this. You know, you try and make some rotations in the early game with your mid. Stampede might stuff those out or perhaps even turn them into a, a possibility for your own team. Mm-hmm. Ten seconds. All right, Trent. I have a, uh, a little trivia here for you. A little, <laughs> a little quiz. All right, I'm ready. Fire Snap Cookie AOE versus LSA AOE. Which one's bigger? Ooh. Hmm. I want to say that Cookie's two fifty, and Radiant the radius is it two twenty five now for LSA, or now it's two fifty? It hmm. is two fifty now. Are they the same? 300 for Cookie. Oh my god, Cookie's huge. Yeah, man. It doesn't feel that big when you're being jumped on. I guess because you always aim yourself to be like right on top of someone, you know, because you don't want to miss yeah. it. Uh huh. Damn, three, 300. That is huge. What's Black Hole oh, 450? I think that's what Centaur used to be, Hoof Stomp used to be, but it's 330 now. Mm-hmm. 10 seconds wow. remaining. Uh, oh, Batrider. Okay. It's a pretty unique man here remaining. coming from Biscos. Yeah, they picked Timber, though, so that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Finally, an early phase Timber, and this feels like a situation where it's worth it, right? You leave it in because your first pick, and if it sets up well, you can pick it fourth overall. I like this a lot from Beast Coast. Solid. I got to say, uh, that tus- I'm not sure if that Tusman is worth the Timber when you're planning to go to that fire center. Maybe they didn't expect Five Beast Coast seconds, to remaining. not get the center, though. And that's why they ended up in this situation in the first place. They might have been trying to keep it for themselves, perhaps. Yeah, maybe. Well, 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 well. <laughs> Didn't work out very well for them, did it? Did not. Radiant oh. team back. Hmm. So I'm not sure about, you know, if this, this timber could obviously be mid, but I'm not sure if Timberlina is necessarily that good of a lane. Uh, Usually, if you get the the lane match ever, right? let's say you dance around a little bit and you get the Timber versus Centaur mm, Snapfire. Yeah, that could be it. Can Simtar or I can can Timber actually handle that? I, I don't know. I think the first levels are rough, but eventually Timber Soil just becomes unkillable. Uh, like he can probably yeah. die up to level three, four, but when he gets to five, he shouldn't die. I think. But if you kill him enough times, yes, that level five. Dyer comes too team. late to really be scary. Mm-hmm. Radiant team. I don't know, it kind of cuts both ways. We'll see. Chris Beastmaster now. Oh, Infinity. Hero, guys. And look at this. Still. About this. Look at the this targeting on the Schofield, too, with the, the clock and the Nyx bands. I mean, those are two good ways to try and shut down the Snapfire, but we've, I think we've kind of discussed between us and Thieman as well as to, like, who the best four probably is, you know, or the best supports mm-hmm. overall, sorry. Um, for, for the region, it kind of feels like it's, like, Stinger and Schofield, like Oracle. Seconds, right? Uh clockwork nicks like i feel like we see way more position ones banned out in these circumstances right especially when they have centaur we always see like oh we got to get rid of the troll the ursa whatever the Mm. faceless void maybe 
<laughs> I guess they're not banning the carries because they probably expect the Timber to, as I already said, to be put in their lane. So they don't really feel like the center, like you should spend bans on a carry, right? Uh, since the center is probably going to lane versus Timber. So anyways. Or do you just well, put ideally, Timber mid now? I don't know. Yeah, this is... Uh, yeah, that is possible. Especially if this Beastmaster pick. Yeah. Kind of feels like you could do that. Or you could just go for the Alk. Big options. Hmm. Yeah, the Alk seemed really effective. We know Beast Coast loves that. Doesn't feel oh, like a Chris like hero though, right? Feels no, more like that part a is a little hero. bit different. Yeah. Hmm. I'd like to see a Razor too at some point. Maybe not versus Centaur War Runner, but I think uh, that hero. I don't know. With some of these carries we're seeing come out, more mm -hmm. like paired with a uh, yeah, a Centaur War Runner could be nice, but not so much versus a Timber. As uh, we finally get an ET so set up here. Guy. So uh, that's a thing, yeah. Much discussed, not really seen that often. Is a great way to amp up this Lena, uh, core or support. Either way, it's just uh, you know we we see a lot of strength heroes, which means they're generally going to be very tanky. So having the the spirit to help whittle them down is great with the magic damage. Doesn't really help that much for the armor, of course, because they're they're not getting the big base armor gains. But the spirit is mostly used for the magic amp anyway. Mm -hmm. And the lane is really oppressive by by the Titan. You know what, that's... Beast Coast, I've noticed this in their past drafts. They often pick heroes that, like, they punish you for what you ban. So, like, you're banning out this uh, this Clockwork, this Nyx, and this Oracle. And I think part of Stinger's mindset is to look at those heroes and think, like, mm. what, like who's now open? You know what I mean? It's not uh -huh. just like, oh, they got my strategy. He's, he's implementing I things see. like, oh, you've now removed, like, some of the best heroes versus ET. I I agree. I think that's uh, that's very apparent here uh, in this part of the draft. Now, this Gyrocopter, is this going to be a uh, now gyro? Is this a uh, five gyro, snap four, beast mid? Probably. <laughs> that's what they want us to wonder, I suppose. <laughs> Weirdly, it's a, it's a one or a five. Not too many heroes you can say that about. Yeah. There's uh, your Storm okay. Spirit. So, so no mid timber. All right, so I see the stack hunters here. E.T., Storm, Lena even. They're, they're going to be invading that dire top jungle area, and they're going on the hunt. You try and stack up, try and get things prepped for this Beastmaster, they're coming in to steal them and put them right on top of their Storm Spirit. A.M. ban. Okay. <laughs> Instant Wraith King ban in response, I guess. I mean, we already know that <laughs> matchup's not necessarily, you know. But, I mean, the A.M. versus the Timber, I think, is the, the big deal there, right? I wonder if, uh, since they have this Beastmaster, uh, they Ten don't plan on banning the CK, uh, and they'll just take like Savannah out, just because they feel like Five the Beast can handle remaining. the illusions. Because these are usually the heroes K1 goes for, right? The CK, mm -hmm. the Sven. Uh, I'd be pretty tempted to ban the Sven. Uh, that, that's such a comfort zone. Mm -hmm. They've already got some good Dying stun setups. Back. It's actually such a good life stealer game, though. I know that they love their stun, but like... Isn't this a life stealer game? No, oh, they've been they TL. The PL. This this is life stealer. They have but they, they I don't ever pick it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's always the first one, right? This this could be it. Uh they also bloodseeker quite a bit, which could be nice for the aggression for hunting for the stacks as well. Five seconds. I'm down with the BS. I think his does Netfire Central Lane is a little scary though. Because you're you're high in armor, but you're kind of squishy. Dire team pick. Mm. Well, they don't waste any time. Go back for the jug. Okay, a little bit different. Keep it classic. Not a not a very common Hector hero. True. No. Agi. My God. <laughs> I'm I'm kind of stunned right now, guys. <laughs> 10 seconds. Okay. But uh, of the edgy heroes, this is about as classic as it gets. We got Five our BKB seconds, built right? in. We got our AoE healing. So this is nice uh, Nice for the tempo they need to play here, I it, think. It is his most played edgy hero. Just barely okay. edging up go. the Troll Warlord by one game. But Now, mind you, uh, his life stealer, and most played hero, actually, all time, of course, has a 65% win rate in pro games. His Sven, a 64%. 
He's juggernaut a 42.22%. So, you know, he hasn't had the best uh, teammates necessarily, maybe, or, or games at the very least with his, uh, his juggernaut. All right. This is not that impressive, but maybe he just wants to farm that win rate. All right. He, he's against Infinity. He feels like he's the, the better carry the, in the better team. Just picks the jug. In season oh, one so of our, uh, our DPC, he played Terrorblade, Gyro, Bloodseeker, and PL. Those are the only four, IG heroes he four played. Strength. And then he played a Eight lot of strength three. heroes okay. <laughs> in 16 games. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. The 16 games, uh, only eight series. All right. Uh, what do you think so about grab the lion, lion here? Yeah, it's, it's a carry gyrocopter. So they, they mm. use the flex with the 10th pick. That's always nice. Um, it, it's all right. I think against Timber Saw, Elder Titan, Storm Spirit, it's a lot of backline coverage there. Sexy Yogi is probably going to get picked on a little bit. He does have a really good front line, but they've got heroes that are exceptional at getting through it. Yeah, if they don't jump near him, like either Whisper or Chris Luck, just think of Stampede into Hex. Like he's going to catch you. You know what I mean? You have to actually That's find true. and catch Sexy Yogi to set these fights. As much as I like to harp on Lion, I, I do think the Stampede's a really nice uh, utilization for the for the line yeah. to try and take advantage of, and then maybe you can get yeah, up to an Aether in the save. Yeah, that helps. Some PO. You got your Beastmaster there, too, if he gets jumped on. Yeah, I'm a little scared <sighs> for the carry matchup. Uh, I don't think Gyrocopter fares well versus Juggernaut. Uh, most of what Gyro does is lifesteal off of dead eggs, do damage, but mm -hmm. Jugger can just do damage, magic immune in multiple ways, through Omni Slash or through uh, Blade Fury. So mm -hmm. I think K1, yeah, I mean, I think Beast Coast has a pretty good draft. I don't I, think. Yeah, I, I think both teams, I mean, in terms of like hero tiers, we have excellent heroes in this game. We, we got like some yeah. of the best heroes in every single role across the board right now, and including mm -hmm. Lion, as much as we give him some, some crap. <laughs> the hero is actually legitimately pretty good right now, especially in the right hands, like Theban has mm -hmm. proved a couple times in his games. True. Uh, true, so, true. you know, uh, I, I'm obviously going to go for Beast Coast, but I do actually think Infinity's done pretty well in this drafting phase. Outside of maybe the gyro. Yeah. Other than that. Okay. <laughs> All right. So some some hate on the gyro, oh, but uh, we'll, we'll see if they can make it Watch happen here. A gyro into a juggernaut. Uh, I've got a black screen. Anybody well. else load in? Yeah. So, All right. uh, just a pause. We're good. All right. Let's just a pause. Going. Okay, well, we can hang out for a moment then and mm -hmm. double check, make sure everything loads in. We're cool there. Can't see the draft screen anymore, so I have to run it off by memory. But He's that big um, brain of yours. Yeah, we'll see if Beast Coast is in form, though. As we've mentioned a couple times, the Beast has been cut. They have bled in the last season, and it could happen again here. There you go. Looks like we've got to resume into another pause. Now it's time to throw it over. <laughs> Gary, what's going on, GB? How are we doing? Last pick, Lion. Are we hype? Are we good? Yeah, we are. I, I've been patiently waiting for this series because a few days ago, Grant, the uh, the CEO of Beast Coast, asked me, what what message do you have for the Beast Coast boys for the next series? And, you know, thinking that the best team in South America, there's no words of wisdom I can give them, so I issued a challenge. I said that K1 is not allowed to play any strength heroes. He can't play Bloodseeker, Gyro, or PL. And what do they do? They pick Juggernaut. They bring it out. K1 has taken up that challenge, and he's seeing if he can win with a hero that you know, is not really played much. Theban, I think it's How you doing? an incredibly good hero. I was actually looking at the stats of uh, the DPC and Juggernaut surprisingly has the highest win rate for a carry unless Ooh. all of the Nature's Prophets were also position one, which I doubt they were. There were probably a few offlaners, but Juggernaut's win rate is crazy. It's like 66% or something like that. Play like 30 games, which is really nice. And uh, I'm going to see, uh, I have a high expectations for this hero. Plus Lena, where do we see this before? Lena Juggling. Lena Juggling. I'm, I'm not too sure. It was, was a couple of days ago. Um, uh huh. It was Thunder Predator. That's who it was. Ah. I don't think it's going to be a Lena Juggling this time. You know, Stinger, he's playing the Elder Titan. But if they do decide to do it, it is quite potent. You know, Lena just stuns, then he peck at them a little bit, then he got the spin from the Juggernaut. The biggest reason why they picked this Jug is so that he can spin right after, like, uh, a cook or a stun comes out from the center, dodge some spells, maybe turn the fight around with the whirlwind. He, hear, okay. he hears the stampede, he spins TPs. <laughs> yeah. He only has to worry about the Beastmaster Roar this game, who yeah. I do believe is countered by the Storm Spirit. This is something that um, other regions have been running against the Beast. I believe it was Secret who drafted Storm as soon as they saw Beast. 
So that's going to be very nice as well, just to be able to hunt him in the jungle while he's farming his Aghanims, or just pretty much get free farm on the mid lane. Yeah, it's, it's a multiple uh, multiple reasons, right? The fact that, like, you know, like Trent said, they've got a lot of heroes that can go steal stacks, scout them out. Storm, like you say, can jump on him, catch the Beastmaster. Early Orchid stops all that spell casting. Storm, a great all-round hero against the Beastmaster. As we do see, quite an interesting move from Beast Coast. Maneuvering all the way around that top jungle, getting a, a good lane ward out for themselves. And they will be able to gather up both of their bounty runes. Oh, Lion. He wanted to walk into that. Gets a nice two-man impale. But Lena was there with a the light strike ready to zone him back. Mm -hmm. So Skull two for two. Field. Man, I keep saying this. I keep fanboying over Schofield, but this guy, I think he's the best <laughs> four player in South America. He is so good. And he always does something so unique every single time. Does he catch this TP from Lion? Yeah. Oh, no wow. fucking way. Oh, really? no way. What a god. <laughs> I was just, I was literally just like sat there. My, my brain went AFK. I was watching it thinking, D does he? Does he? Does he? Oh, oh, he does. Yeah. 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 And what is he going to do now? He's going to bully the lion. Don't let the lion go top. Now you'll be thinking, why would Lina do this to the position five? Well, the timber saw is going to be one v one in the Jaro. The only way timber loses this lane is if the lion helps the Jaro kick the timber out of the lane. So you get the timber to level two, level three early on, and he can just dominate on his own. And then Schofield can be moving around, maybe gank for the storm, gank for the elder titans <laughs> lane bottom. There's a lot of potential. So there's a, a little. What's going on? Uh, there's a, a little bug with storm spirit. He's not making any animations or anything. He's <laughs> he's standing like a mannequin, arms by his side. He's a soldier. Uh, stand by. Oh dear me! Oh. Yeah, some uh, some issues there. We 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 might have a remake. We will see exactly what's going on here. They're trying because They're it is. Try uh, it out. Yeah, we'll we'll see if it does reset itself and get back yeah. into game. But it looks like Storm is completely bugged. There's like no attack animations, no spell animations, <laughs> li literally nothing. That is oh, yeah, that's batshit. That's actually batshit yeah. insane. That's got to be <laughs> you frustrating. Can't, you can't that's play gotta, Oh that. my god, he's like shooting out of his. Belly. Waste, his, Gary. His, be his belly button's got a laser cannon attached to it, apparently. <laughs> laser cannon. Oh my god, Gary. Oh my You're so god, blue, sir. What a, what a video game. Look, look well. at this. Oh my god. You know what this reminds me of? Remember that Marana arrow that looks like... Um, the you know sperm? what I mean? Yep, yep. The sperm yep. arrow. That's what it looks like. He's like shooting... He's... he's Unloading his shot onto the Beastmaster. <laughs> the pay-to-lose arrow. Well, that's definitely <laughs> going to be interesting for PP to play against. <laughs> that's Storm Spirit. Six and one for Chris Luck as he kicks off his lane stage with a real oh weird, a real weird beginning to this game. How do we cast this with a straight face? My oh, God. I, I yeah, can't. Anyway. No, it's impossible. Let's Lina's look at another top. lane then. Schofield yeah, has to salve up. Home Missile's chasing. Already took the, the brunt of the damage from both Sexy Yogi and now. But like, like you mentioned, Whisper, he's been allowed to get to level two and a half. He'll have those points up in that reactive armor. And then Lena, really, the, the world's her oyster, right? She can roam into mid, play down yep. bottom lane, make up a tri lane, defend stacks. down there, or just chase around the lion. Mm -hmm. Already starting with some stacks for the Storm Spirit. Get that yep. fast Orchid going, and that will help hunt the Beastmaster even better. Nice. And like, Timber is already level 3. Like, this lane top, I don't know how Infinity are going to manage to kick this Timber out anymore. Lina could actually just TB bottom, start pulling like small camps if they actually get a D ward on this camp first, and just try it there. You don't need to help Whisper anymore. Exactly, there's just so many options. And Lina could also just go and sit in the dire jungle and watch for, you know, flying stacking or making anything up there. As they pull back the large camp, and Timber goes to contest a small pull. Lina putting some damage onto the gyro, forcing him to cast spells onto her. So Timber saw having an even nicer time. I do get a nurse spike and a rocket barrage though. Lena, first blood, handing it over to the dire team. So all of that good, good aggressive play turned around is down bottom lane. Little boy walks mm -hmm. back away from the elder titan. Yeah, and this is this is what I was thinking. She should just leave. Like go go somewhere else. I mean the pull was nice on the big camp. Deny some creeps, but giving first blood to the tim to the gyrocopter. Like you're just bailing him out. Look at his last hit, Gary. Oh Six. storm. Oh yeah, I see this. Four seconds for axes. Very He's annoying. got a fairy fire and a bottle. Nice fight. He's He'll be fine. Whoa, okay. Pretty close, though. Almost 11 axes on the storm? Yeah. Jesus, Chris Luck. Yo, Chris There's Luck, a lot you of can't stacks get on hit him. once again. Oh, oh my okay. god. Oh. He dodges that Lord. one. 
Schofield's gonna I mean, kill him and help him out. Dead. If that hit him, he was dead. 11 axes, no way. Oh, is Whisper gonna, ki gonna kill? Look at that nice tree placement. Whisper drops down the branch, chains up to it, slays the lion. Really beautifully executed. Whisper, man. This, this guy is, you know, I would say the second star. Of oh, cookie. The spin from K1 comes out in time. Gets away from the center on the snap. And a salve, of course, from Stingers there so they can sustain and stick around in the lane. A little stomp, but without that spin, they can't really push any more damage onto the onto the center with a jug at least, with the ET with some big old thwacks. 51 bonus damage. Forces them back all on his lonesome. Yeah, they're playing the War of Attrition here in his bottom lane. Elder Titan, he's got a lot of tangles and salves funneling in to this bottom lane. K1 also got that healing ward. As long as they don't burst with the centaur cookie double edge combo. It won't matter, because they're just going to heal right back up to full. Yeah, they're trying to chip away at him like a little cookie here, a little shredder there. Bring K1 down to, you know, 60, 50% HP, then go for the, the actual kill attempt. Yeah, there's a rotation here doing. for Skolfia too, to the mid lane. He's going to plant some vision first, check in the jungle mm. camps here. Um, but it does look like this ward will spot out Skullfield going back top. So he's going to stack another big camp here. Oh, that's a four stack. Very juicy. Very nice. Oh, doesn't get oh, it. Oh, it didn't stack. Bad. A little bit upsetting. Yeah, the one. fact that top lane is a complete free lane. Whisper moves straight onto the lion, and there is Schofield who moves in. Sexy Yogi has another stun in three seconds. Might be able to get it off as the gyro goes straight for Schofield. Lean over the light striker, right? Holds him back. Sexy Yogi salves up. There's another chain for Whisper. Does he manage to get up to the high ground with it? No. As we also have Storm zipping away from the Beastmaster elsewhere. And it looks like Lion is actually going to be okay for now. Now is... Stick uh, charges. He's Ooh. a really long chase on Schofield and he can't even find him. Oh, and then eventually Lion's going to die. Yep. Whisper is still going to go and chase this Lion very deep. Schofield even gets PP's Courier. On his Timbersaw, he just doesn't stop chasing. Now he's going to come back into that top lane. He's got three stacks of reactive armor, a couple of stick charges. Now he's hit level six. Gyrocopter actually, you know, it might be under threat Rush. himself. Throws out another barrage. Oh, there's a big kill he's if he can get it. He's looking all right. Oh, Ooh, into the no. trees. He's hiding away. There's the final touch for now. Oh. Meanwhile, Chris Luck in the mid lane. Oh, incredibly low. They already spent the roar on him, yeah. Another axes. Not gonna land. They're just gonna re get a bottle refill, thanks to Sexy Yoge who just respawned. But that was really nice for Ronaldo. He doesn't get the Chris Luck kill, but he does get the kill onto uh, the Timber here. Very high XP kill. Now not level six. Even though he doesn't have a lot of assets, his net worth ain't looking too bad. But K1 though, look at this man. Oh man, he's just spinning onto the center. Little boy stomps him, but Lena with that final projectile flying. Mm -hmm. Does make up the tri lane down bomb. And K1, mm -hmm. yeah, like you say, top of the net worth, and that's only going to keep accelerating. Yep, he's 500 gold ahead of the gyrocopter without any kills. K1. So he's got a lot, of, like, pretty much all the assets, plus the big camp. It was, like, stacked, I believe, two or three times that he managed to farm with the other Titan there, which helped him out. He's a little bit low on experience, but he's not going to complain with how much farm he has right now. Oh, absolutely not. And they will cookie him. Elder Titan. Cancelled. Oh, doesn't get the stomp. Gets stunned up mid-channel. K1's still able to get away, and he's got a healing ward up in a second, as now does get shredded by that storm rotation up top. Very nice. Chris Luck there with the Whisper, both of them level 7. And this this line, you know, he left the lane, he sniped a courier, moves in to clear some stacks, so he does help out PP. But he does Ooh. give up that life of the gyro. Yeah, that was supposed to be storm stack. PP just got. That's going to be his point booster. Chris Luck is going to be a little bit pissed off about that. Doesn't get any of the extra gold either. Elder oh, Titan. another stomp on Stinger. Okay, they finally K1. get a kill with their combo. I sure do. It, it still means that, you know, K1 sticks around here. Ring of health. Perfectly happy, just farming away. Very comfortable lane for him, whereas, you know, now on this on this gyrocopter, just being run at. Shaq, oh, a cookie, but there's a spin. Yeah, Juggernaut's away. Yep. I keep looking back up the top. He's having Shakram's thrown at him, Timber Chains. Chris Luck Not farming. A... Stay in some stacks now too. I like what Chris Luck is doing though. He's in the enemy jungle, taking the farm away from the Beastmaster. He's also opted to not go for Boots of Speed in this 
game just wants to get that straight fast orchid. Two rolls. I, I, I can't look at this storm, yeah, man. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> Help me. It's okay. Oh man, he's hit level eight. Yeah, you're right. No boots, just bottle into robes. A very well dressed storm spirit. Well, Beastmaster, how, how is he looking on this Aghanim's rush? Point booster up, 700 gold saved, so still a good couple of thousand <laughs> gold to go. Straight back into that mid lane, keep the pressure on Chris Luck. Chris Luck, yep. He's gonna have to walk away slowly without his boots. Arms by his side. It just looks so painful, it's the way he's walking to camp to camp without boots. He looks like one of those guards at Buckingham Palace, you know, they're not allowed to talk, they're not allowed to <laughs> smile or move, he's literally just standing still, with all these photographers and tourists around him. No! Oh, <laughs> I'm here to guard the Queen. Yeah. But you know, Gary, Radiance one thing I've always out. noticed about them is like, they try to drag as much as they can. Really don't like breaking it down too early. They won't whisper to get his farm. Look at him top right now. Putting the pressure on to Sexy Yogi, but there's a lot of magic damage in this lane. He's got oh. a cloak. Oh! But there's Schofield. And to also stun up this now gyro, forcing the stampede. Pamplona the also came up here. But they're under tower, diving the gyro, and the snapfire can't save him now. He ran the wrong way, off to the left-hand side. And Whisper just chases him straight through. While mid lane, the zip in, Chris Luck gets the invis rune. They've also got the spirit stomp. PP held in place. I can't finish him off. They do force uh, yeah, another rotation in there. But there's a sentry with a roar. Maybe they can catch him. He's out of range now. Chris nah, Luck counting his lucky really stars. Hard. He got, got away from that. I don't think Lion would be able to walk in there anyway. And uh, you can see Chris Luck. Like he, They got the stomp off, but he's not going on to the Beastmaster because he yeah. respects the Beastmaster. There's a lot of damage that comes out from those axes and the roar. Plus, he's got a point booster very tanky at the moment. And go farm up some little stacks as well. That just feels he's, like Beast uh, Ghost event. gold from that Orchid on Chris Lock now. That's going to be huge for them. Because they've hit level 6 on this Lena too. So they could even smoke up a Schofield and Stinger and maybe go swing up into that top lane. Put the pressure back onto now as Gyro. So we do see Centaur with uh, with Tranquil Boots and a, and a Dagger Rush. Something I don't think I've seen this patch from Centaurs. Little boy deviating a bit from the script. Tranquil Boots, interesting. Yeah, it, it doesn't give him that uh, scaling potential that you normally get from your other builds. Plus, you want to have that tank ability instantly. It's very interesting. It's something yeah, no that you Vanguard, normally no see a very long time ago. Yep. Okay. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it Not used so to be the, the old school build with the active, definitely. It's Chris Luck jumping straight onto Pamplona. And there was Schofield and Stinger ready to set up, set up for it. K1 is beating up this bottom tower with a Battle Fury and a Power Treads. <laughs> with a catapult behind is, him. Yep. And he has not left his bottom lane at all. I don't think if any have done anything to put any pressure onto K1. And this is the kind of game he loves to have. He doesn't like Great to Great stun. Oh, jug. Got Stomp him. on two. Finger. And the cooldown comes. K1 shredded along with Stinger. Oh, that was wow. great. Stampy really straight was. on top of them. That stun from the fog from Sexy Yoge setting that up. I mean, if he saw the lion, he would have instantly spun and walked away. So that's very good. And a mid tier one as well. PP claims that tower while, you know, Chris Luck is elsewhere. They're all focusing bottom tier one. So Beastmaster now, what? 600 gold away from Aghanim Scepter. It's going to be 13 and a half odd minutes. You'll have that Ags ready and raring to go. And equally, Whisper gets the top tier one. So it's a very, feels like a very disjointed game where <laughs> these towers are falling in. Kind of unusual places. Oh, Lion. Oh, oh, where's Storm going? Zips with the Orchid yeah. onto the Centaur. Chris Luck goes for the solo kill on to Little him. Boy. He doesn't have a hood, doesn't have Vanguard, so not tanking up. And now Lion, the focus. Ball lightning forward again. The Lion Striker he hits, and that's a nice killing sprint for Whisper's yeah. Timber, who gets tier one top, rotates bot, and a team fight win for Beast Coast. So Whisper feels like he's done his job top. He just wants to go bottom, defend. They see some opportunities to make some plays with the Orchid on the Storm. They get two kills, especially on the Centaur without a hood, which is really nice. And now K1 is on the top side of the map, the most lucrative part, just farming it up. And it's going to be much harder for Infinity to make any plays onto him. Beastmaster does now have Aghanims. He just needs to go back to the base, refill his bottle, get that Ags out, and maybe make some smoke plays, because they got to get something going with this beast. He has not been able to get involved yet.
Yeah, there's the smoke. But that's without the beast, connect onto. That's true. Nice. They do have a centaur blink. They're thinking about uh, K1. I, I like where their head's at. They want to deal with the carry. They see him top now. They can always stampede into the hex. Yep. I believe K1 is in a lot of trouble here. K1, how fast are you? Oh, oh no. He is so fast. He is so fast. The Stampede's still there, though, and they've got Chain Disables behind him, but the Ball Lightning Orchid stops the Lion from doing anything. They're going to get two kills off the back of this. Ball back into the little boy. They've killed the Lion off, and Lena comes in to clear up. Schofield slays the Centaur, and now Pamplona stuck here without anyone to help him. Poor little Snapfire caught up in the Light Strike Array, and K1. The quick fingers. Do they know who are there ganking? Do they know this is K1? You can't disrespect him and go with the Centaur Blink. You gotta stampede into the Hex. The Hex is instantaneous. You saw yep. him, he just dodged the Hoof Stomp like it was nothing, baited it, got his team there, and just turned the fight around. And that's gotta feel so bad for Infinity, because that looked like a really good, clean kill that they were gonna get onto K1. Yeah, it, was a, it was a beautiful move. The concept was there, the planning was there, execution lacking, unfortunately. We'll see, he though. PP has a regen rune bottled. And that Aghanim Scepter ready to go. But he's still just going to keep on farming. Not looking like he wants to move out on the map. Try and finish off the, the boots of travel first. As Beast Curse, they've racked up a 4,000 net worth lead now. They are in a real great spot here. Rain in their hands. And Whisper, that bodyguard, just frontlining with a... He's got a healing ward following him. They know exactly where this dire squad are at. So we can go plant himself in front of that tier one bottom, which hasn't taken that much damage. And they do blink stomp in. Whisper, he's got a hood up, but the wow. cookie and the magic damage is substantial. Whisper, shredded, but a stomp with a Laguna Blade now. Incredibly low, the zip in, Chris Luck tries to blow up Little Boy, and there it is, a dominating streak for him, and Niles Gyrocopter trapped in between all of Beast Coast. They roar up the storm, and the axes are thrown. Stinger retreating back into the trees, but they kill off Chris Luck. The storm's broken as Pamplona throws the, the kisses axes. in, and trade back beautifully. Oh my a triple God. for Pee, Pee and he's gonna go for more. Axes are building, four stacks chasing up now. Him. The cookie forward, chasing the juggernaut. Okay. One, he's trying to juke this one. Still has a spin to play with, and PP can't keep the vision on him. Oh, that looks so good for Beast Coast. I mean, the Timber did die first, but he Radiant soaked up bottom all bottom of that bottom damage. Bottom. They got the nice Earth Splitter here. You can see it come out. Timber is going to die. They Laguna Blade the Gyro. The Storm zips in. Sounds his Beast, goes for the Centaur, then the Gyro. But then, here comes the Beastmaster Axis. It's just too much. They wanted to go for more kills. Storm instantly dies. And look at these axes, they're insane! <laughs> I mean, Beastmaster still loses most of these games, but that timing, what, what, like, between 12 minutes to 20 minutes, the axes just do way too much work. <laughs> it's as if you gotta just avoid the Beastmaster at all costs until you get, you know, your next set of items or you're initiating onto him. I mean, some, like, some heroes, like, they're impervious because they're tanky. Trying to, trying to break a team fight with this Agonist Beastmaster is so much damage spammed out with a... A lack of cooldown on those wild axes. Absolutely insane stuff. And that's what got him boots of travel now. We're heading into the E-Blade. So he's scaling incredibly well. Almost keeping up with the net worth of K1's Juggernaut. Who, you know, has Battle Fury. I'm beginning to feel, though, that Ghost Scepter, E-Blade, might not be the best option for PP. Maybe a BKB would be something more interesting. Just counteract the Orchid of the Storm Spirit. Because they will be looking for you, PP. And... You will need to stay alive. That's He's a risky team right now. Mm -hmm. But they don't see anybody else. Yeah. Beast Coast. So they're just going to ignore him. Try to move towards the top side of the map where they know Beastmaster can't get to right now. And they scan this the outpost. Yeah, they knew someone was here. They spotted the centaur, but the lion has handed himself over. The sacrifice for little boy. Allow the centaur to survive and hide away in the trees. It's so snappy and decisive how Beast Coast, you know, they lose a fight bottom. But they're immediately up top, kind of claiming territory, stamping their foot down, and making sure that K1 still has a nice spot to farm, but also pressure into the tower. The trouble is, uh, you, you just can't do that. He you is can't. too quick. You got, it has to be Lion. Lion has to be able to do that. That's why Joe, That's why K1 was there hitting that tier 2 tower so confidently, because the Lion's dead. And now they'll just go back in again, like Whisper can front line, tank it up. Try and draw all this attention from Infinity up into the top lane. 
The gyro shows, trucks a homing missile in towards the timber, who just chains forward aggressively with Shakram. Stampede to get the gyro out of there, and Centaur actually wants to move in aggressively. The Laguna Blade, though, chucked towards the line as they chain disable. That Storm Spirit, the kiss is coming, still but alive. he zips away. He's still alive, he's hasted and sprinting out of there. PP chased. The uh, Axes, they've got to give up on that. This Gyrocopter, surrounded by K1 and Stinger, gets a double kill on the Juggernaut, and they're going diving into Tier 3's. Whisper, he's tasted blood in the water, and so has Chris Luck. Onto the Beastmaster, but zapped down by the little Shredder. It doesn't matter, though. Still a massive victory for Beast Coast, especially if they can get this fifth hero, Snapfire, is being hunted inside the Dire Base by <laughs> Schofield. Oh, come on. This is, <laughs> this isn't pretty, is it? Lion misses the stun, too. Schofield's toying with them. Oh, Korea Snipe, maybe? Hex up. Pamplona has a cookie. A little boy with a stomp. And there it is. Schofield bit <laughs> off way more than he could chew. Hey, space on the map. They're all, they TP it inside of their face. <laughs> got the tier 2 top. Got the outpost now. K1's chilling like a villain. Making his way towards an Aghanim Scepter. That's going to help quite a bit. Yeah. The game's getting so much harder for Infinity. It just feels like they can't go on the right targets and Beast Coast, their game plan is very simple. They just kill the lion, kill the snap, if you can't find the Beastmaster, that's it. So easy to pick off these targets, yeah. I mean, the, the, the fact that this, this Lena is pretty farmed as well, like Schofield's closing on 5,000 net worth, has an ether lens barely behind the centaur. Who is you know, definitely struggling? You you mentioned it. You know, lack of scaling on this little boy centaur is becoming incredibly apparent. Yeah, he doesn't have a hood. Like you're playing against Storm. I understand hood won't do anything to the timber saw, but it's very good against all the other heroes on Beast Coast. Eventually, you would need a pipe for your allies so they can tank up oh, against the storm. Oh, Rip. sexy Yogi. Sexy Yogi. He's We're got nine bladed. deaths. Twenty oh, minutes. That's rough. In. That's real rough. Real rough. I mean, this is why you don't play a position 5 lion. That's just not a thing anymore. It's like something that was done back in 2016. <laughs> yeah, quite a while ago. And it's all, also the fact, just, you know, I don't want to hark on about the centaur, but you know, Blink Dagger is definitely an investment in, uh, in aggression, you know. And the fact that, what, three out of the last maybe four or five Blink Stomps have been towards Juggernaut, who has just spun and run away, you're not getting any return. Out of that pretty hefty amount of money you've spent. And we'll go Lotus Orb next though. It's going to be you know, a massive item for them against the Orchid, against Omni yep. Slash. Will be helpful, for sure. One thing I would like to see from Infinity is maybe a Morbid Mask or some kind of a lifesteal for the Gyrocopter. Because he does mm. have the Aghanim Scepter. So he can get that double lifesteal going even if he is uh, stunned up. Maybe that can help him tank a little bit better. It looks like he's going for a Monkey King bar next. Radiant Which isn't scanning. horrible, but maybe, yeah, just get a life steal. Get a life steal item. Yeah, yeah I guess they, they didn't get a possessed mask or anything, did they? You know, he's running around with his pupil's gift. That's a good maybe shout. he's waiting for the 27 minute. Uh, what's that? What's the blade called? Damn it. Paladin sword. Paladin sword. There we go. Radiant yeah, nah. that's the one. Well, simple Roshan for K1. Tipped up by Chris Luck and Aegis in the hands of the Juggernaut, who has Aghanim Scepter now, just manipulating Ooh. space and time to create gold down to nowhere. You see what apparently, he just did? Swift Slash the Creep Wave. Yeah, so he can break the smoke of Infinity. Oh, oh, that's smart. Yep. He broke the smoke, got back, and he's like, okay, there's the information, guys, and his team just tipped them for it. Well, hey there. Oh, they do find a catch on Schofield. Stampede to try and retreat. There's a BKB on Chris Luck, though. Roared up and down to half HP, but the healing ward keeps them topped up and allows the zip back Got in now. onto the gyro. Spinning down now, and a stomp is there. Holds the Centaur in place. The Earth Split that comes cracking through him. Centaur still going to get a decent stomp down, but the ball lightning back in onto the easier target of Lion. Claims the life of Sexy Yogi while well, Whisper. Chakram not landing. Did try and timber chain deeper and the storm spirit, the big ball, lightning in onto that tier three. Little boy sanced and burnt by the soul burn of that orchid, while Whisper just stands his ground in front of the tower. Not a care in the world. He's even got a low to sword now. There's no need to wait for anything. They got all the items they need. Storm has regen his mana to full. Lina still got Laguna Blade. You're only missing Omni Slash, but that's not a big deal. You got your Swift Slash still. And then, of course, the spin, the most important thing for K1. 
And there's another, what, five seconds till healing ward. So they can actually, yeah, keep this push sustained quite nicely. Tier 3 grabbed up. They want, he like, wants to stay. He wants yeah, to fight. Absolutely does. <laughs> and there's a swift slash straight onto the line. Wow, Slice okay. and dice. K1 unstoppable. And they do make the jump onto his Aegis and claim that first life as the Gyro's BKB gets used up. Oh, that's not going to help them defend this lane of barracks, though. K1 goes back to whack in buildings. And Elder Titan tries to stomp. Just about misses on the Gyro and the Centaur. But our homing missile returning towards now. Could signal problems for them. A three-man blink stomp. There's a swift slash and a cookie in, but they aren't lacking damage. They can't finish anybody off. It was a good initiation, but little to no follow-through. Forcing Beast Coast away from the barracks, at least. And they hold on to their melee. Another missile being returned. And a smoke from Beast Coast. The fake back. The jump in. Chris Luck finds the Beastmaster, the primary target. Sans Laguna Blade. Try and blow up PP. Beastmaster's about to drop, and Chris Luck zips out with a sliver of HP. Just surviving as the kisses come crashing down, but landing on very, very few targets. No creep wave, though, for Beast Coast, so it's, <laughs> it's on still the way. difficult to break the building, but you're right, it is on the way. I mean, without the Beastmaster, that was your big base defender. And K1 knows he can just spin TP with Beastmaster dead. No roar available, so, uh, what, 25 minute full set of racks mid? Spread out across the map. Whisper goes top. K1 down to bottom. And this is All right. really you the opportunity for Infinity to do something. Let's... let's. Yeah, they got it, but the Beastmaster is dead for so long, though. Yeah. He's so high level, even though his team is behind. Like, if you look at the networks, they're not doing terribly, right? The, the, the course of Dire. It's just that they can't find an angle to take these fights because Beast Coast is just not giving it to them. Not putting any targets on the map. Yeah, I guess if you put Juggernaut bot and Timber top, you can't kill Timber, you can't kill Jug, everyone else is hiding. Who do you go on? You got no vision, no information to actually play towards. Okay, you know what? We've been praising Beast Coast a lot. Let's find some flaw in their gameplay, okay? All right, all right. I see one right now. I'm clicking through all their heroes, Gary. I don't see a Solar Crest. <laughs> Where is my Solar Crest, Beast Coast? Why does my Juggernaut not have Free 60 attack speed and movement mm -hmm. speed. 65 attack speed, 10% movement speed. Where yeah, is it Stinger. at? Schofield. Where is it? Sco yeah, even my boy Whisper here has a Kaya and Sanj. You know, he's got the Lotus. That's that's nice. Help out his teammates or himself. Yeah. But where is my Solar Crest? It's a very, very good question. I've got Glimmer Cape and go. drums on the ET. I don't want What's everybody it? to think, you know, we're bias casters. Bias casters. We're praising Beast Coast. Here you go, guys. Take it. Beast Coast. No solar press. Devastating. Really, Theban. Disappointing. Unacceptable. Yeah. Not a, not a reasonable item build at all on any of these heroes. Looks like it might be last chance saloon for Infinity, though. <laughs> buyback wise, we've got Beastmaster, Centaur, Snapfire with buyback. Incredibly important when your gyro is being run at and you're forced to defensively cookie and glimmer. Still has his BKB under cooldown, but with a catapult still up and running here for BC. I think K1 wants to make his move back up as that spin does come off cooldown in a couple of seconds and they make the jump onto the gyro trying to bring him down the bkb comes oh, now turns around wow. they get the stuns the onto k1 Holy and shit. schofield's gone the kiss is still what? coming whisper what? stinger trying to retreat east coast they're losing them all down goes timbersaw they might find stinger as well they're cooking forward the blink in from centaur stinger Finds stinger. his way through he's the trees but he's under a <laughs> now glimmer cape tp do they have any more stuns they've got reveal Pamplona with the damage and four kills defending that barracks infinity. Beautiful They've stuff. That was really good. I mean, we're going to see the replay right here, but Juggernaut, I think he didn't have the spin up. Look at that massive two man stun into the four man stun by the lion. Oh my god, the position five lion doing mad work and it kisses right on top of it. Just burst through these tanky heroes. Like, it doesn't matter if you have a hood or pipe or whatever it is. If you get stunned up like that and get hit by those kisses, bust a flat cannon, you will die. It's just a, just a matter of seconds, right? You know, I, I had the Juggernaut click. It was like four seconds for Spin to come off cooldown when he made the first steps back up the ramp. And that was when Infinity knew. Now they had the moment oh to God. move in. Look, that 
sexy yo game might have 11 deaths but the four man stun right there might have been all worth it assuming you know infinity are able to come back with that fight which i do think they're able to like if you look at jarocopter now he does Whoa. have that morbid mask he didn't go for the mkb he got a maelstrom and said he wanted a cheaper item but also something that can pierce evasion if needed uh look, look at storm look at look at storm and the ancient yep. what am i looking observer oh, what's chris what like hell? he's able to yeah, walk wait, through what? buildings he's, no, wait, he he's has, fine now though he has so animations okay back now. but he's still able to walk through buildings C can he and he was just walking through an ancient this is the weirdest i mean cool. the thing is gary you gotta be okay with it we're only in beta so <laughs> yeah it, but... it's okay still in beta god Alright, so never, never ending development cycle of the video game. No, he's still bugged. He just looks like he's walking all the time, even when he's standing. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> well, hang on a second. There's a fight. There's a fight okay. brewing, Theban. All right. Light Striker 8. There you go. Spirit with Stomp. Stomp. Gyro, Lotus Orbed up. But this Earth Split is coming. Cookie's not going to save him from that. Little boy caught up in it, but a great Earth Split. Holds Timber and ET back. Chris Luck zips in onto now. Chain misses, but they've still got the catch onto the Gyro. It's forced to cool down and try oh, and Omni. retreat, but the Omni Slash comes through the in time. Slash. It's a swift slash, in fact, from the Juggernaut as Sexy Yogi gets spun down and slapped by Whisper. They've also got ET wow. Lena chasing the Beastmaster. Axe is starting to stack up and build on Schofield, and they decide not to. Not to dive and chase any further with those heroes anyway. Whisper has different ideas though. Flame throwing his way through the trees. And Infinity it's down just two heroes. How they microed Infinity. Like they just poked at them. Little by little by little at the gyrocopter. Sleep, stun, magic damage, magic damage. And then they zip in, force. Like he's so low health that he can't just turn around with the BKB and fight anymore. Because he will just die to the Omni Slash. So they're on the retreat the whole time on Infinity. The only way they could have turned around there is if Beastmaster Centaur made an offensive move onto Beast Coast while the Jaro is retreating, and then he could just come back into the fight when they're stunned up. Yeah, and, and Chris Luck has such safety at ball lining into the middle of that because he has BKB Lincoln Sphere. Nothing can exactly. stop him now. No roar, no stuns, nothing can go through that. Mm -hmm. So whatever they gain from winning that fight on the top side is pretty much all gone. They lose the racks now. Game heavily back into beast coast favor i feel now needs this satanic badly to be able to tank up through all this poke damage and to turn fights around but they, well, they, might they have up. other plans yeah they want to smoke oh, up chris luck again he's just straight on top of them forces lois orb to get out of that orchid but centaur and lion left stranded little boy is being burst down and they've also got the catch on pp schofield and k1 Slap down the Beastmaster, and again we're in a situation where Beast Coast are 5 versus 2, pushing up to high ground, force the BKB of now's Gyro, and the buyback of Sexy Yogi. Whisper misses his chain, limit up Lotus, very tanky, stunned though, he's got the back of a Chris Luck though, Yogi's in gone. onto the line immediately, oh, right. sleeping up the Grandma, snap fire all stunned, and now again alone. Zap down by the Schofield leaner, and that's got to be game, 34 to 16. Infinity, I they just didn't stand a chance. They really didn't. This game, I mean, I can't even say Infinity played super poorly or anything like that. Beast Coast, you just do all the small things better than you. Taking the bottom tower, understanding when to pull, when you're strong. You can see Juggernaut, even though he doesn't have kills, he has higher net worth than Jaro because he's like getting all these lasses, the way he's playing in the lane, getting the big camps, you know, getting that little bit more XP and gold.